Greetings and welcome. This is Mandrake. This is Mission 11, Command Spire. On difficulty legendary with all skulls on, except for Bandana. Going into this mission, my loadout is the BR and the Sentinel Beam. Mainly because the Sentinel Beam will work well against the uh, Sentinels in this opening. And I'll be able to pick up a shock rifle or two, but I must absolutely have the BR for this mission and carry it on to the next mission. So the other part of this is you're not going to see any kinetic ammo dispensers until the end of the mission. So I'm going to be conservative with with the uh, BR. I'll use it only really when I need to, which would be on jackals or when I can get headshots on something. Uh, other than that, gonna, there's going to be plenty of sentinels which means plenty of shock rifles and so I want to try and use those as much as possible for this first part here when you get in here it's these first two sentinels are already triggered to come out scripted to come out within a few seconds of you arriving and I want to note that uh, the trigger for the next two sentinels to come out will happen when you kill one of these sentinels. So when you kill one of these sentinels, that will trigger the next two to uh, be summoned. And I do have a bit of a meltdown. For some reason I started using the BR, and then after that I was realizing, see if you heard there, when it blew up, you could hear the uh, other two doors open for the sentinel they've been summoned in makes this fight difficult because while you're engaged with uh, the other one you got these two others that are going to be you know perhaps behind you or you know get come into sideways the other thing here is I'm trying to keep my shields up because you get shot once or twice and you're going to have to try and get your shield back or get the cover I heard a full shield recharge this fourth one I don't know if it was Get damage or what, but it, now. he had a bit of a meltdown. The other hard, difficult thing here is, at minimum, it's, you know, it's hard to even do yourself, but at minimum, you at least want to kill one of these sentinels over the floor so that uh, they drop the weapon. Uh, some of them like to hover over the, you know, open abyss, and then it just falls into nowhere, and then you can't recover them. So at least minimum one, you know, one to two. That's really about all you need to uh, continue on to the next encounter of the uh, Sentinels. And the other Sentinels that you encounter, they're over ground and there's no pit or anything. They're gonna, you're gonna lose the weapon. You'll be able to keep and salvage them. Uh, other bonus thing is, uh, even though Famine is on, they seem to drop the. When they drop these weapons, they've got a lot of ammo in them. It, I. I don't have it noted how much, but I just know it's it's almost like a 75 or 80 percent, even though it's based on numbers. There's no percentage, but uh, they they got a good deal of ammo in in them, so you can pick one up and then have reload it, touch up on one, and that other one is going to have half, if not more, of what's laying on the ground. The one you carrying will be full. You you can get a lot of ammo and a lot of this stuff shock rifles. Uh, the task here, what I'm trying to arrange to do is to uh, place and take the BR with me and I'll come back down here and uh, collect the uh, shock rifle. I, I jump up here. I think I go back down there and I drop the shock rifle in this place. Uh, don't recall yet. I thought I... I'm kind of looking around for a way to grapple it, but I know in past, um, I thought there was an instance I was able to grapple the BR. It's just very risky because you're open, there's just an open pit below you, and it's just too risky to lose it, uh, no matter what, really what weapon is, because if you're over the edge, you drop what weapon you grapple, uh, you drop what you're carrying in favor of what you grapple. And so there's a chance you can lose one or both weapons that uh, you're messing with. So apparently I'm leaving the BR behind, but only just uh, long enough to uh, 
uh, and she, go after these three sentinels. After I go after these three, I'm gonna go back to my BR. And he was going to delete me. And I'll be leaving behind a, a, a shock really? rifle. He doesn't talk. I realize much. after the He's fact that the shock rifle I left behind was full one. Especially when it comes to killing. The thing things, I should have done here right, was Chief? just to drop off a used, uh, used one. That way I wouldn't be missing out on anything. But I end up. Getting them all. I gathered and merged up all of those. So you got three sentinels in this uh, grab lift room that requires a sentinel seat. I'm sorry, it requires a power seat. So that's one down. I started to have equipment problems here. I want to put down a drop wall and it grapples. I want to put a threat sensor down. It grapples. I want to do the drop wall. I grapple. I want to put a threat sensor down. Switch to that. And it grapples. And I'm a near death here, so I just aggro and just go right after this one and uh, manage to get my shield back. I got into cover. Try to grapple the weapon. Oh my goodness, this is just frustrating. Trying to grapple the weapon and it grapples the floor. Pulls me in the open. Then miss the grapple on the enemy. Then grapple the enemy and I'm caught under the step and couldn't get moved towards him. I mean, just all kinds of bad luck and all kinds of just bad luck things were just going on with this. So, my shock rifle is now full if I reloaded. A little loss, huh? And so, there's going to be a as you saw there, kind of down in that uh, energy beam pit. There's uh, one of my shock rifles. There's still uh, one, you know, there's still one here, and I think one more further on this way. I'll, I think I'm going to do a scan. Am I going to do a scan? Uh, so at this point, I'm, I've got what I need to uh, recover my BR. I don't want to leave the BR laying around too long because I don't want it to idle out and despawn. I'll be working my way towards, Gravity down towards that. don't work without power, you know. Uh, to mention, so when you go back up where uh, pretty much the path that I took to go up to encounter those uh, sentinels and then you had the lift room, as you walk into that lift room and you're standing at the panel or the terminal to put the power seed, the, the power seed you want is just straight ahead, the balk wall straight ahead. We'll probably get to that here in a moment. I got the BR, I'm going to climb up here and I'm going to drop it off and, and go after this uh, power seed and the rest of these. Fine, look, there's a power source. Does that help? I'm going to try and grapple this shock rifle. Bring it up, I turn and look where I want to, uh, at the fall. It didn't want to throw up, so I had to throw it up. The other weapon. I get to juggle them into where I want to go. Now I got this weapon reloaded. I'm going down here. I think I'm looking for another uh, to at least max out the ammo of this one. So I'm going to touch up on this. A little lost, huh? I think Any it's the only. I don't know if there's any other shock rifles down here. And so there's going to be plenty of item running and searching and looking around and exploring. And so during those portions, I will be speeding things up. So here's the the, uh, the terminal and straight ahead back room is where the uh, power seat is. I'm going to drag with me some this uh, other shock rifle. So that I have some ammo whenever I go up against these other sentinels. There's good, whenever you get the power seed and approach this room, or the room with the uh, the grab lift, the power seed terminal, when you get close to it, at least within like eight or ten feet, you'll cross like some kind of barrier. You, you'll kind of barely notice it because I grapple. So right about there will trigger the uh, sentinels to come out. There's going to be three of them. And this is also a difficult section. They move around, fly around. They like to flank you. They know what this shield is. And they're trying to move around and flank me. I think I missed that shot. I did get the punch. And then 
here comes the third one. Or maybe that was the count. Sentinels, those three are down. Got the power seed. The next portion here, and when you go up, the next set of enemies you're going to be facing are going to be banished. And I chose, and, and from the way I play and with what I'm doing, I want to take as many sent, uh, shock rifles as I can, fully loaded shock rifles as possible. One of those sentinels had, uh, it was one of the shield sentinels, and when it's uh, thunderstorm, he's going to have the, he's still going to have the heat wave. I do not use the heat wave as I look back on this, and so it's not even necessary to take the heat wave, unless you have a special need or you favor using the uh, heat wave and have a good use for it. I should not have thrown up that heat wave, but I still have the BR here so I can at least juggle and throw up the lift uh, these uh, shock rifles. I end up with two or three up the lift, I don't recall. You'll see once we get to the top lift and um, be on the floor, you'll see a pile of them. So my secondary is still the sentinel beam. I have this shock rifle reloaded. There's another one over in this area. I picked up all the ammo of that one. And so it means the one I'm carrying is probably not full. And I just caught, just picked up that one. And so now I have another full shock rifle. up the lift which by the way this is the same lift uh, from whence you started the game when you started this mission this is the same lift so it appears that I have left a partially used shock rifle behind the ground level so up here it looks like there's three on the ground they should be all three should be should be full and a heat wave uh, on the rack on that weapon rack there's a shock rifle I'm sorry not shock rifle stalker rifle and I kind of regret not taking that along because that will come in handy uh, to also take out grunts now so as I was saying earlier about there's no BRs I mean, there's no kinetic ammo. There won't be any BRs. And there's also not going to be the any plasma pistols. This and mission will not have any plasma pistols on a down, wep weapon rack. So you won't find it. any there. And none of these it's enemies, the none of the enemies carry a plasma pistol on this mission. Sending them out. So to you'll need to use Obviously, something to take out these shields. So a shock rifle something and dangerous. stalker rifle are really good Everything with uh, killing the these uh, grunts and shields and uh, roots and, and such. Skimmers, uh, jackals uh, are fine for uh, using the BR. So I'll use the BR and say like these skimmers and just get the headshot. Uh, jackals, like shielded jackals, you know, jackal major, jackal minor. Uh, using the BR on them, but I want to be conservative with my BR ammo because, as I said, there's not going to be any kinetic ammo until the pretty much the end of the mission. Whenever you face off against the, uh, you have the boss fight against the monitor, the adjutant, Regulus. There's up here in this section. You're going to have two grunts on this left ramp which I turned and went left here, and on the other side, the, there's another opposing, it's very equal ramp on the other side, two grunts on the other side, appears three skimmers and two jackal majors, 
and those are the enemies you're going to have up here that you're just going to be facing. So again, I'm using the BR where I can just get a easy headshot. And then I'll switch to the shock rifle for these other two crumbs. Making use of the drop wall, and that dropped nade worked just great and took out one of the uh, grunts. Uh, the reload, and that nade also took care of uh, the other one. Now at this point, uh, opening that door on the other side of that door are two. Uh, Berserkers, Brute Berserkers, and they will charge through the door once you open it. So have a plan for how you want to attack them, or have a, you know, at least have a plan for them. I'm going to run around and gather. I had some, I thought I had a weapon or two laying around here, and with all that excitement, stuff got kind of blown around. Uh, actually, no, I think all my weapons are hanging out down below. Uh, I was thinking of when I was doing this after encountering the berserkers. I had, here at this point, I moved my stockpile up to that door. And my plan was to use the rocket launcher, use the uh, dynamos, or use a dynamo to stun them, shoot the rockets on them. Felt like that would be good enough. And one of these berserkers took two rockets to the face, and it didn't kill them. But I still managed to get them taken out. But in doing so, a lot of these weapons I had here just got kind of blasted around. So I have um, my dynamos ready. And I'm about to throw out a, uh, a drop wall. Because there's still going to be grunts in that next room. And uh, I don't recall if they, when they start to engage. I was not good, apparently not very good with uh, putting the dynamo down. It didn't tag the first one. I happen to have three, three shots with the rockets. Uh, I guess being that um, there were three skimmers, they dropped a rocket. One of them went through the floor. If you notice when I do the scan, you find one of those rocket launchers down in the floor. You can't You can't retrieve it. So, with the other two that were dropped, I managed to get three shots out of uh, the, the two rocket launchers that were dropped. So here's my weapons are kind of scattered around. Uh, note that these grunts are going to engage you. They're not going to push up to the door or push up too far. Uh, they're just going to they're just going to snipe and shoot at you from a distance. It's just real annoying. So be aware of that. And if you put a drop wall down, put you know put one down. Yeah, I'm just trying to run around and gather up the weapons that were kind of scattered around. Uh, in this room, this next room is going to be... Find here, there's going to be two Jackal Majors, maybe one Jackal Major, and then four to five grunts. Um, I do want to note that... Arrangement... Arrangement... Numbers and type of enemies may vary uh, from playthrough to playthrough. Say, like in this this next room, I may have it noted that there were that there were four grunts through a particular playthrough. I come back and do this playthrough, and then there's five grunts. Uh, I also have it noted that in that room there were two jackal majors. Well, this time there was one. Uh, so. Arrangements and types and the numbers can all vary uh, from time to time. And and will be the same throughout this whole mission. Room to room. Um, can, the, the arrangement, even though I may note, as you'll see for the playthrough, so for this playthrough, there's going to be five fronts in this room. And one Jackal Major. And so, yeah, yeah, just getting shot in the back. And also note that the uh, skimmers will drop dynamos. The uh, berserkers will drop dynamos. So feel free to... You could have used 
plenty of dynamos on uh, opening that door for the berserkers, and if need be on some of these. But these are small enemies, you know, the grunts and jackals are, you know, they're small guys, they're little guys. They, they don't require a uh, dynamo. Uh, but you can fall back to this room and pick up uh, a dynamo if you use one or two. There should be a few of them laying around. I don't think I meant to use the shock rifle on that jackal. And this is the last grunt. So my method of uh, weapon usage is going to be the shock rifle on grunts. Uh, Jackals, like uh, Jackal Miners, Jackal Major is going to use the BR. Skimmer is going to use the BR. And here I am, I'm down the very, almost the very beginning. Going back up the lift. Um, roots. Uh, coming up in these next couple rooms, there's going to be uh, Pulse Carbines. And so I'll use the Pulse Carbines on Roots. And I'll be using pulse carbines on grunts once the shock rifle ammo runs out. There's going to be plenty of grunts. I'll go through lots of shock rifle. Shock rifles that I've been bringing with me. And which means I should have brought along that stalker rifle. But looking at that, I'm, I was carrying a full stock, a full shock rifle and three spares. Sure seemed like there was going to be enough, but I will go through pretty much all of this stuff. I just paused and looked out the window, looking here at some of the pillar processing and pillar creation going on. Not too often I stop and look at, at those items, especially here on the playthrough. I'm not I'm typically not going to do that, or the broadcast. I'm not typically. But I am also bringing along the keeping the uh, sentinel beam, but. As I look back at the playthrough on this, uh, when I'm doing while I'm doing this commentary, is that I noticed that I didn't really use the Sentinel Beam, uh, except for those first the first two uh, encounters, three two three encounters with the uh, uh, Sentinels, and beyond that, I, didn't really, I don't think I really used it. So in this room. Got these two grunts here. This is the room at the end of this room is going to be the portal. I found that hilarious that you got these, uh, that the, the grunt is sitting there spinning his weapon. He's just bored. It, good work by the developers on that. That's, I love that. So this room has six grunts. You got two of them at this doorway. Two more kind of around the middle part of the room and two more kind of near the end of the room, like around the portal. But they all kind of push up. Uh, for the most part, you're not going to find two of them hanging around the portal anymore. Now that they've seen what's going on, they're going to push up a, a list a little while, a little ways. Uh, there's going to be two skimmers and an elite, as you now see uh, the skimmers on the, uh, on the threat sensor. And there's going to be an elite back at the portal, protecting the portal. Last of grunts uh, here. And there's the elite showing up on the threat sensor. I think I'm down to just uh, the elite, so I'm going to move around a few uh, weapons, move around a couple things. I may be pulling all these weapons and moving them up. It's also a good uh, thing to 
at least touch up on these weapons so they don't despawn. It was just kind of a reminder. I don't. I, I really feel like I don't need to take the Sentinel Beam, although uh, I I didn't use it, but it's I find it necessary and helpful to use it against Sentinels. I might shoot once or twice, three times with the uh, shock rifle, and then just finish them off with a Sentinel Beam. The trouble is there's not any uh, other Sentinel Beams where you can get ammo. Only get three, two or three, from, from other uh, brutes that carry them. So I'm saying, out of this guy's line of sight, the grapple pound worked out well. I find it surprising how inconsistent, or the rhyme or reason why it works and why it doesn't work. That I usually, I was on the impression that it's going to work best, or you have better results if you have a longer pull. Or connection with the uh, the grapple, like the longer connection you have with the grapple and wind up that, uh, or like arm or whatever, that, uh, yeah, and there was that rack with the uh, pulse carbines I'm gonna throw. You can throw weapons through the portal. As I was saying on the grapple pound, I was in the impression on the longer uh, grapple that you have, the better chance you have of trying to kill on it. And it turned out on that particular instance, which I was kind of surprised, I had a rather short wind-up, a rather short uh, grapple pound, and managed to get the kill. And there's a, another instance or two where I ended up with a... Uh, it was a short, just a short grapple and grapple pound, and I was able to pull out the kill. And there's other times where, where I felt it was more uh, the longer of the... Uh, the grapple reach that you have, and then do the the grapple pound, like early on, so you have the longest portion you have to do the pound part. What seemed to be more successful, and then that kind of got a little messed up when uh, I only when I pulled off the short one. So pulled through, or at least what I threw uh, weapons I threw through the portals. You see, there's the one shock rifle, sword, pulse carbine. And the, uh, uh, was it the, yeah, the Sentinel Beam. Uh, this room here has five, uh, skimmers. And they all have rocket launchers, so at minimum there's going to be a rocket launcher with at least for five shots. Uh, in the previous room before the portal, I did leave behind, accidentally, left behind a uh, shock rifle and granted it was a used shock rifle that you know still had ammo in it in the end here it will kind of hurt a little bit but I'll still have enough ammo to do to take out these enemies because I'm going to be switching to the pulse carbine I brought that along there's also going to be a room where there's going to be still another rack or two in the rooms ahead that will have another pulse carbine or two so I, I won't run out and there's you can see these skimmers drop uh, dynamo. So if you, you know, have a use for dynamos, you can use them on these enemies. Uh, I didn't really use them much. Uh, I just kind of kept forgetting about them. So this room here is going to have five skimmers and one brute major, and I believe the brute major can have a rocket launcher. It's really, really kind of. It's really rare that you'd find a uh, brute major with a sentinel beam, but in this mission, I want to say there's at least, I know a minimum of two, there could be three uh, brutes that had sentinel beams, and I could be confused with the previous mission where I know the first room you come to has a brute with a sentinel beam. Uh, so this mission may only have uh, brutes with uh, two encounters with brutes with sentinel beam. Yeah, that drop wall, very necessary. Fine, it'll it'll stop a rocket. Maybe just one. Possibly. And there I'm using the BR, trying to use as little BR as possible. I had a clear headshot. Don't have much shock rifle though. I think it was a full one when I started. Continuation. So more more rocket launchers have been dropped. 
I don't recall even using a rocket launcher on this mission, or, I mean, yes, there is one more place I'll use a rocket launcher, and it's going to be another hallway with a uh, couple uh, berserkers, and that's about all the rocket launcher I'm going to be using in this mission. Doesn't mean you don't have to use them, I just, I'm usually real conservative and I don't use them. This little hallway should have two skimmers and two brutes. The VR to take out the skimmers. And on these uh, brutes, then I'm going to use the pulse carbine and wear their shield out and then headshot them. Now that's a drop wall managed to hold up a few shots from the rocket launcher, unless some of those shots were hitting the ground. And to hold up well. And this last brute, I'll just get close to him. Shoot him a few times with the carbine. Most carbine, and uh, I think I'll stick him with the nade. And here's uh, more, uh, because of the skimmers, there's more dynamo, so I, I could actually just stun him and probably stick him with the plasma. You're a one. The other side of the pillar so that I don't take any damage. So now speeding this portion up, I'm going to reload on the uh, pulse carbine on that rack. Saw two of them on that rack. Move these items along. I think I'm just going to take one full rocket launcher. Uh, as far as the sword goes... I may have only used the sword once or twice. It's always just a, in case I have a situation where I feel like I, I need it. So it could have been a situation, you know, such situation may mean I may not have a shield and the enemy could possibly shoot me or something and just a really close, close quarter swipe might be enough, whereas a melee from a weapon may not be enough to get a kill. I, I keep the sword along. Don't think I even use it. Lots of rocket launchers because of all the brutes and skimmers. This next room, this uh, pillar processing room number two, will have two brutes. One of the brutes is going to have a sentinel beam at the rear. At the both these brutes are at the rear of the room going to be two jackal majors, kind of like the bottom rear of the room. There are six grunts total. There's going to be three on the left, three on the right. You see there's the first one. He's the one on the lower deck. So you have one on each side of the lower deck, and you'll have two. There's the other one on the lower deck. Our threat sensor down there. See two on the upper deck on the left, and two on the upper deck on the right. There's your two on the left, one of them down, and then on the right side there'll be two more. When I put a thread sensor down, you'll find those two. little bit of a slow play I can do a lot of this fight from the doorway instead of just jumping in the room and uh, getting shot up from both angles for, from all the different angles. Waiting for a jackal to kind of step out where I can get the easy headshot and I'm sticking with the pulse carbine for the grunts and I'll use the pulse carbines on the, on the brutes. There's one jackal. Get my eyes on. The grunts do a good job of staying in cover. So they just get bored and step out. The brutes kind of move around a little bit, but in the most part, they're going to stay in cover. And it would work out best if you can clear out one side of the room. Thus, you can get a better foothold in the room. I think 
feel like I am using quite a bit of pulse carbine and I'm, I'm looking around for ammo. I'm going to take the used one. Why it wasn't where I could just get past those. I'm going to run back to this previous room and go to the rack and touch up on the ammo on it. Shots on them and switched, and there goes the pillar. It's conveyor and it's being going through the ceiling and blocked my shot. He shows up on the other side and so he's a shot. You gotta make, you gotta move and get them shot quick because their shields will come back quickly. There's the brute with the rest of them. So there should just be two of these enemies left. That uh, spike grenade tag. Me. I'm gonna want to melee one of these, one of these two remaining enemies. Have a little bad luck here. I'm surprised that didn't kill me. My shield is already damaged. Looks like the human has had the enough. other thing is, I don't know where that trigger line is, but that hallway has two brute berserkers. So I guess the trigger line is just maybe a couple more steps into that hallway. Because I went rather close to that doorway. I may have stepped in through the doorway. But didn't trigger them. And so that's what's going to be next is uh, the planning for the two berserkers in that hallway. Is how I'm going to attack those two. I've already seen how they can withstand two rocket shots. In some cases, two shots will kill them. Sometimes it won't. I got pr plenty of rocket launcher ammo laying around, so I'm not going to have any shortage of rockets. So I can shoot two rounds and reload. Usually don't have much time to reload. So thinking about this, I should have gone with the rocket launcher and the sword. So if I needed the melee, the melee is going to give me a better chance of getting a kill and have more kickback on the enemy. And if I just punch with the like the shock rifle, so I they've been activated, they've been triggered. Put the uh, threat sensor, or put the uh, dynamo down. Two rocket direct hits did get the kill and took the shield out of the second one. And I really wasn't sure what to do with this one here. I didn't get the uh, traffic pound. I only just managed to get a melee off of them. So the second melee managed to get the kill. And yeah, I got a little fortunate there. So again, like I was saying, it should have had the sword. I would have felt better about getting the kill with the sword. So from this point, it's again moving the stockpile to the next area. There's a grab lift at the end of this hallway, and at the uh, also at the end of this hallway is going to be a, I think a shot. I'm uh, sorry, not shock. A plasma ammo dispenser and a skewer, but it's only a two-shot skewer. I just filled up, I believe, my uh, pulse carbine. It should be full. I want a shock rifle, one of the pulse carbines. Get the sword. Yeah, I'm thinking about taking the skewer. I don't recall using it. regular legendary without the skulls it can be effective for single shot on the brute that's up ahead and 
And I don't recall it being a good one-shot kill on the, um, on the grunts when they got their shields activated. I am going to have a little bit of good luck here on these, uh, uh, grunts while their shields are down. They don't know I'm up here, so I'm undetected. So I have a chance here. I'm going to scope these guys and kind of recon these guys and see what I can get a shot on. So one of them is patrolling left to right. This other one just kind of stops. And so I'm waiting for him to come in division, so I got a chance to get three here. And managed to get three with two shots. So that was fortunate. It worked out well. There's only two more grunts and one brute remaining. So pulse carbine on these last three. Get the uh, drop down and just got that headshot before he got in the cover. trick. I wonder, did that wall destroy the, uh, disintegrate the root? I just barely caught it. It's kind of hard to see. At least he didn't take his weapon. Stockpile I'm taking with me, even though I see the skewer, I don't think I'm gonna mess with the skewer. I'm run I'm not sure what I came down here for. Except maybe to see if I could fill up the uh I guess it was the pulse carbine. And got it full because I've got now two full pulse carbines. The sword, sentinel beam, one shock rifle. items along. I'm not going to take the skewer beyond this point. Okay, so this next area, there's going to be one grunt to the left and one grunt to the right. I find it funny that he's sitting spinning his weapon at me. It's adorable. I had different choices here where I would either just shoot him or just punch him in the back, but I felt if I punched him in the back, that grunt right there is going to see it happen. But I still got a good play on this one. Shooting them, but it didn't matter. The enemies up ahead I already know I'm here. So the next grouping of enemies, there's going to be three grunts in the middle where I'm looking, and one elite off to the right at the right turn of the uh, pillar conveyor. There's going to be a trigger line that once I get it on camera here, move these move these weapons up. I'll pulse carbine the grunts or use the shock rifle. That little barrier that's sticking out from the wall here on the right, that looking out right, to, uh, this little barrier I'm looking at right here, sticking out from the wall from the right to the left. You cross the line of that barrier and it triggers the two sentinels to, uh, to come out. They'll be summoned to come out. So that's your trigger for those the sentinels there. The elite will like to throw nades. The grunts can't see me. There's the trigger line. And here come the sentinels. Comes the second sentinel. I'm already getting shots on me. I'll fall back in this area. 
they can shoot through that fiery wall that's here on my left. And yeah, they can see through. It might be hard for you to see through and catch them. The uh, threat sensor will help out. I got one down. I noticed the sentinels on recharging their shield seems to be more of a timer rather than uh, sure it's a it's a timer but if you continue to shoot them doesn't delay if anything it doesn't delay the recharging of their shield you can shoot them four times in that fourth shot after hitting them the fourth time and they survive it their shield could just pop and be charged and active So oh, there's, I'll get more uh, shock rifles with these two sentinels. I dropped them. Need all I can get, you might say, for the uh, the grunts and sentinels that are going to come. They're going to be coming up. So I got the elite, and there's one more. I want to say one more grunt. There should be three grunts here because I hadn't even engaged the grunts yet. Got yeah, three up on the. Three grunts on the threat sensor. Frozen. Yeah, I'm not even gonna bother shooting at the lead. Throw another nade. Just have to have another grunt to step out. Now I can go after. I can push up and go after this third one. Try and get this elite by himself. And the grapple pound worked well. Drops a sword in a heat wave. I'm going to move up the stockpile. See if I can point out the trigger line or the uh, trigger for the next two sentinels to, uh, to be summoned. They'll come out. There's a rack with a shock rifle. We've got plenty of shock rifle ammo. So this, I just crossed it. It's that little, another little kind of little half-angled barrier that sticks out from the wall. I just crossed it and heard the sentinels come out. So we're gonna two sentinels and one brute in this this uh, room here. Pretty much just the right, just the left turn. Sorry, left turn from this uh, pillar layer. Pillars are gonna rotate upward and go up through the ceiling. I'll have two. Sentinels to deal with here. They move around quite well. Very effective. Also trying your best to get the timing of their shooting. Gonna shoot, and I think it got delayed by uh, by doing the grapple. of weapons in the stockpile. Alright, this next section took a few replay or at least reviews or replays uh, watching how this occurred. I was always on the impression it was Two brutes, or actually like maybe one brute, and two sentinels that uh, were summoned that came out. But it turns out it's four sentinels. So there's a trigger line I'll point out to you here coming up. 
that will trigger the Sentinels to come out. And I think with different playthroughs, there may be different results, but I believe, but I want to say that three of the Sentinels will will attack and charge you and engage you, while a fourth one will fall back to the uh, that last hall where the hallway turns and goes to the portal, and will hang out kind of around somewhere in the area of the portal with the Elite and the Skimmers. So the uh, trigger line for the trigger line for the Sentinels. Come on, see these slanting piers? The second sl slanting pier where that debris is? I just crossed the trigger line. It's like the middle of that uh, slanting pillar will bring the uh, Sentinels out. There's going to be... At first it seems like there's two, but there'll be three of them that will engage and come after me. And the fourth one, as you probably just saw briefly, hang, will hang out in the back and go hang out around the the portal. These three will engage. They're aggressive. They kind of... Yeah, you get close enough, you saw those pinchers, and they try to grab you. If they do grab you, they will kill you. That's enough to kill you. Instant death. I don't know what happened with the melee there. You're in a shield charge. You got another punch. You got the shield recharge. You got a shot on me again. To get a shield recharge, so that's the third one. The fourth one, as I mentioned, uh, according to this playthrough, is hanging out by the somewhere in the area of the portal. There's going to be one more brute that did not push up and did not engage with the other brute. So I managed to get the first one with the uh, hard light coil. The other one's hanging out just after this left turn. With that brute. Looking at the stockpile from here, there's really not too many enemies remaining. There's the brute, a sentinel, two skimmers, and an elite. And I can just you can take the lead out with just a, a ground pound. Uh, I can use a pulse carbine for the uh, the brute, but I'll just do a ground pound on him. So I think. For him, I take the sword? No, I guess not. And it's a short takeoff, a short grapple, short gra grapple pound, and it was enough to send him through the ceiling. So there's going to be the sentinel going up there on the left. And back there in the back, there's going to be two skimmers and the elite. So I really don't have to spend much time on the stockpile because beyond this is the monitor fight with the adjutant resolution. And for him, I just need, I'll just take the sword, shock rifle, sentinel beam, BR, I just take those four things. So this, the sword was just a just in case I have a situation where I want to melee some, like melee or sword the, uh, like a sentinel. and. You'll see why it didn't really work out, why that didn't uh, work out. There may be three of these skimmers. There are three skimmers. I was thinking there were two. I misquote, so misquoted. I misspoke. There are three skimmers. Just a headshot anyway with a BR or a shock rifle. And unfortunately, that dynamo tagged me and got some shield damage. So it's just these two left. So there's really not much I have to worry about, but I was already in the habit of moving these the stockpile anyway, so I'll be in a little time to kind of still move stuff around and I'll come and realize like yeah, I only need to, a couple enemies a couple weapons out of this pile anyway. And then I'll be contemplating on the what that's gonna be. For sure I need to take the BR and there was something odd with that melee. Just, I had grappled, had a hold of him, and it like went through him and didn't get the melee. And as I turned to try and melee without the grapple, it's just like it was a whiff and hit the wall. So now I'm just going to dance with the elite and try and grapple pound him. You can do it without using any any uh, weapons. Just punch and get my shield back. Sorry. 
also I also want to note if it, hasn't, if it hasn't been noted or known already, you grapple pound does, does not count as a melee. You will not get a shield recharge, but my shield is charged fully, so I can I can go and engage with the uh, grapple pound. Worked well. So now I'm going to speed this up and just. I, I don't need to be messing with the, uh, you know, these weapons anyway. I just want to make sure my shock rifle is full. The uh, upcoming boss fight will have hard light, shock rifle, kinetic, and plasma ammo dispensers, and they're unlimited. So you can reload all you want. They're unlimited. Or to put it this way, I have not. Uh, really pushed far enough to see if there's a limit to them. Uh, in playthroughs of past, they've been buggy to where I had like it wouldn't even reload my, it wouldn't refill my shock rifle. Uh, I know the bug still seems to kind of exist. I can't reload my BR. If my BR is low, it won't reload it. And I know the BR is not full. It's absolutely not full. And I didn't even, in this playthrough, I didn't even bother trying. Perhaps I probably should have tried, but I know there was another playthrough. Two other playthroughs, and it didn't reload it, so that's why I didn't even bother. It's just when you get to the top of the elevator after defeating the monitor, uh, there's ammo dispensers up there, and they do work. So, taking the sentinel beam so I don't have to mess with uh, picking up the sentinel beam that's in the area of that boss fight. I'll just have it on hand, and I'll just reload it at the hard light dispenser. I'm going to mess with the rocket launcher. Oh, I have what I need just carrying the these three items. Or actually, it's yeah, four items. Two on the floor. Carrying two. I will be setting down, and actually when I get up to it here, I'll be leaving behind up here on this, this uh, edge here. I'll leave the sword and the BR. I don't need to take the sword with me. And if I remember, want to talk about what happens after this fight, at least talk about the environment of the floor or how the dynamics of the floor works. Weapons will fall through the floor or get stuck on the surface of the floor and you can't pick them up, move them, or anything. They'll get stuck on the floor and they're done and gone. So if I'm going to carry the BR or any weapon, I'm going to carry it and not juggle it across the floor because it's been been burned too many times they just get stuck so that's at the end of the fight so i'm not going to mess with the mess with it right now so we're going to get started on this fight other thing i want to note on this playthrough and other playthroughs i don't recall ever picking up a checkpoint or to put it this way earning a checkpoint like in the fight so when this fight starts you have to play it all the way through and get the kill on him before you earn a checkpoint. You're you can't just get halfway on them, two, three arms taken off, all four arms taken off and earn a checkpoint. You have to do this whole thing. And to put it this way, it may not seem like a hard fight, it's just a long grind. You have to be careful and cautious with uh, with handling him and you just gotta be patient. I'll keep saying it over and over again. You just gotta be patient, it's a long grind. He has friends. So to note, you're gonna get uh, reinforcements after the first arm, you get one sentinel. When you take out a second arm, you get the reinforcements of one sentinel. So right now you got this one here. He's reinforcing the first one. Please down, there should be a second one. Or should be one flying around right now, which is reinforcements from the second arm. You take out the third arm, and there's going to be... Two sentinels that will show up from reinforcements. And when you take the fourth arm out, you get there's, there's going to be two more uh, reinforcements deployed. Two more sentinels deployed. This is a slow, long grind that I'll just you know repeat and keep saying. And it's really the best that uh, the best that you can do is just to kind of grind this out, avoid being shot. Manage to still melee a sentinel to get your shield back. 
you can also run up to, to the uh, monitor here and punch him while he's down in this state and just get a punch on him and you can get your shield back. But in this playthrough, in this part of the broadcast, you don't, I don't, I don't do it on this, uh, this successful run here. I, I can get all, I've had all kinds of bad luck with him. I've had like, uh, being blindsided by one of the, uh, sentinels. And you just, you know, getting, you can survive being tagged once, you get tagged a second time, you can die. Uh, the, the, um, the monitor wall. So, so sometimes these, um, these uh, sentinels, this one's just kind of hanging out in the corner. It's kind of one of the, uh, these areas here. He's just kind of stuck there. I don't know if it's kind of a glitchy, buggy thing, but uh, it's an easy, easy way of getting your shield back. So I kind of look for those where I can just get my shield back. There's another one you can hear right around the corner here. Yeah, so here's another one. Get the punch on that one before it self-destructed. So full shield. And I can use use these weapons and reload. Or get them refilled. Where are you so does he have one more arm? He has one more arm left. So I destroy this arm and he'll deploy two more sentinel reinforcements. Typical uh, plan was to use the shock rifle for taking out the arms, but it just it was just long. It's such a grind. It was just took so long to do that I started switching to just shoot maybe once or twice with the shock and then just use the sentinel beam to finish it off. And seeing the sentinel beam finished well pretty quick. You you kind of get exposed if you're if it takes so long to shoot and trying to make contact. So I kind of moved on to try and mixing it up with the uh, mix up with the uh, sentinel beam and the shark rifle. Not sure if it tagged me there. Yeah, and I don't want to engage that sentinel with the uh, monitor nearby. This one here, close by. Got my shield back. That was much needed. If I would have gotten shot one more time, I would have died. So it can get it can get busy real quick. But you take out these sentinels, and then you can just slow and just like just a slow grind, just a slow play. It's just you and the monitor, adjutant resolution, one on one, no other sentinels, and you just play it slow, play it easy, play play for cover. And just get shots on them when you can, and don't risk it. And really, at this point, is just to use the uh, sentinel beam and shoot them in the eye, and just get a good direct hit in the eye. And I also want to do it through the the drop wall because you get an extra shock damage as well. If I get some shots on him. He's going to fire his beam weapon, which will melt you. You you might survive a quarter second to half a second of the beam. But any more than that, it's going to kill you. And secondly, through the drop wall, the drop wall protects it for only a short bit. It'll blast right through that drop wall. So one of my deaths was... Um, I saw it, the drop wall holding up its beam, and when it shot through one of the other panels, it just went right through and, and just melted me. It was just like an instant kill in one of the uh, prior... Uh, So again, there's no earning a checkpoint until he's dead. So you have to just, you have to really kind of drag this out slowly, slowly. Just keep making contact. Fall back and get cover. Just kind of be patient through this. And just listen for him to fire up his weapon. I got good damage on him. Now I think I can put the drop wall down. I don't want to 
any of that nonsense. Don't be firing it through. Got some good licks in. Just got to be patient. And stay, stay away from... Whoa, that was close. Right through the drop wall. Drop wall doesn't even look necessarily damaged, but you can see that one panel kind of off the right, kind of went through it. Yeah, that drop wall is not going to be helpful anymore. And I managed to get the kill there without waiting for the drop wall. There's times you can see where when he comes around the corner, you can probably get a shot on him and then just fall back. So I was saying about the That's floor and again. taking other weapons. There you can't take any any other weapons than the two that you carry. If you put anything on the elevator or manage to get anything on the elevator, uh, they will despawn because it, the the game seems to kind of uh, it goes to a it goes to a, a loading it goes to a loading uh, screen and thus whatever you have on the floor is going to despawn. And secondly, as far as juggling weapons over the floor, uh, they'll get stuck, especially the BR. I've had such awful luck with the BR-8. I think even the, the sword, if it's not a thick weapon, uh, almost a bit of a gaff there, almost fell to the ground. Almost fell into the abyss. I don't bother with taking the sword. I'm just going to take the BR and the shock rifle. They're both full. Well, actually, the BR is not full, but I have enough ammo to do what I need to do. And there's a kinetic ammo dispenser at the top of the elevator, just to the right-hand side. And I can reload from there. So, getting to the last of the mission here. I guess we and there's it. the kinetic ammo dispenser. Like we aren't These the enemies ones. don't know I'm here. I was thinking right away that they were. I was already in defensive mode and looking to start shooting. I get one, two, for some reason I switched to the shock, I could have just BR'd the third one. So there, you're in this last area, you're going to have two brute snipers, they don't have shields, they're by the plinth. There's two jackal majors, one to the left, one to the right, and there's going to be six grunts total. You're going to have uh, kind of three hanging out in the middle area, maybe four, but you're going to have one to the left and one to the right. Um, and when you kill enough of these enemies, then, say like this, uh, grunt that's on the left side, you'll see on the threat sensor, he'll start to fall back and rejoin with his other comrades. And I've got plenty of ammo to shoot these guys, and so there's, the uh, brute is there. Here, I don't know what was going on with the ammo dispenser, just would not give me the ammo. Took three times, and so now he's, I was doing the timing, wait for him to shoot, and now he's an easy shot. Now I can save that mule for uh, a melee, and I get my shield back. There's a, I guess rather obvious, there's the power weapon ammo dispenser. That's going to be for your rocket launcher and skewer, because uh, you're going to have three phantoms are going to show up, and the shield is going to go down, and you're going to have to defend against those and take I'll them out. And so I don't know if it's a timer. I think it's a timer. It's a short timer. So you want to grab the rocket launcher and the uh, skewer. And, and I really kind of go in this little cubby hole right here by the plasma, by the power good. weapon ammo dispenser. And I put up a drop wall. The uh, phantoms will flank you. So you kind of have to... I didn't want to shoot the skewer. I, I saved the skewer for if I shoot two times with the rockets. Then I can switch to the skewer and uh, see if it gets me a kill. So the first one is down, and now two two phantoms are going to show up. So I got to get things reloaded quickly. Like I said, one of these phantoms is going to flank me on the left. The last one. They know what's up. It seems very obvious this is a good hiding spot. Another phantom, please. 
I did those two shots, I could switch to the skewer and try and get a kill shot. But it turns out that that worked well. Now I want to get my BR and the shock. Fully load them. And then move on to the next mission. Uh, repository, at least for the start of repository, you're going to go up against sentinels, lots of sentinels. And so that means shock rifle and sentinel beams. And at the start of the mission, there'll be a rack with one shock rifle and two sentinel beams. So I don't have to take a sentinel beam with me. There'll be plenty in the next mission to work with. Uh, there'll be hard light ammo dispensers. So the PR there is full. And I think I'm looking for the shock if I haven't already. Yeah, it's full because there's one laying around. Yeah, one of the brutes had a skewer, one had a shock rifle. And now everything's full. It's now just a matter of finishing, finishing off the mission. So I was saying about the next mission, yeah, they'll... You know, I have what I need to take into the next mission, and there'll be plenty of weapons and ammo to at least get me started. So thank you for joining me for this mission, and I look forward to you joining me for Repository.